Chapter 14 What? Turtle cried, horror-struck. Anemone, you can't do that. I so absolutely can, she said triumphantly, already sliding the Skyfire back into Kinkajou's pouch. My magic can do anything. But that's awful. You can't enchant someone's feelings. Anemone, please take that spell off. I don't think I can, Anemone said with a shrug. Squids and sea monsters, you should be thanking me. I just did such an awesome nice thing for you. She reached over Kinkajou and patted one of his talons, grinning. I'm the best sister ever. But I don't want her to like me just because of a spell. Turtle felt as if he was caught in one of the rainforest's enormous spider-laden cobwebs. He couldn't undo the enchantment himself, if that was even possible, or else Darkstalker would notice. But he couldn't take the Skyfire away from Kinkajou either. She needed it to be safe from Darkstalker. You'll thank me later, Anemone said confidently. When you're married and have lots of little pink dragonets with web talons. Turtle buried his face in his claws. Poor Kinkajou. This was so wrong. So wrong. Who's getting married? Said a soft, hoarse voice. He looked up and saw colors rising slowly to the scales all across Kinkajou's back, like the time he'd spilled five different ink bottles over his blank scroll, back when he still dreamed of being a writer. Sunrises drifted into her wings, pale peaches and yellows strengthening into glorious bands of orange and gold. Her green eyes were open, and her head was turned, pillowed on her arms. She was looking at him. Hey, turtle, she said sleepily. We missed you on our heroic quest. I missed you too he said, a lump rising in his throat. At least, I think it was a heroic quest, she said. I'm a little bit fuzzy on whether we actually succeeded. You did, he said. You saved Winter's brother and stopped Queen Scarlet. I did? She said. Really? Like how? In my sleep? Am I so amusing that I can save the world and nap at the same time? She laughed and her gaze drifted up to the ceiling. She sat up, startled. Whoa, this place looks exactly like the rainforest. It is the rainforest, Turtle said. You're home. There's a lot to explain. Hi, Anemone said, elbowing Turtle out of the way. I'm Princess Anemone. I don't think we officially met at school. I'm the one who totally just saved your life. She fluffed her wings and stretched her neck a little longer. Oh, wow. Thank you, Kinkajou said earnestly. Um, save my life from what? You got clobbered by a bad guy, Anemone said. You've been unconscious for, like, days. You might never have woken up except that Turtle begged me to heal you. She poked Turtle's backside meaningfully with her tail. What bad guy? Kinkajou cried. Did we clobber her back? Three moons, did I miss the excitement again? She flared her wings, then did a double take at one of them and jumped. Hey! My venom splash scars are gone. Turtle remembered the triangle of black spots that had dotted Kinkajou's wing. He shifted uncomfortably on his talons. I guess Anemone's spell healed those along with all your other injuries, he said. Spell? Kinkajou yelped. You healed me with magic? That is amazing. I know. It really is, said Anemone, preening. I did like those scars, though, Kinkajou said a little wistfully. They made me seem all battle-hardened and tough. Turtle bit back a laugh. As much as he adored her, it would never in a million years have occurred to him to use those adjectives to describe Kinkajou. Ah, oh, well. She said with a shrug. Thanks again, Anemone. Ooh, I'd love to be an animus. Is it fun? It is now. Anemone said. Now that I'm the one in charge of my spells, and nobody's telling me what to do all the time. There was a crash outside, like a tree falling not too far away. Anemone's face brightened, and she darted to the doorway. Don't be scared, Turtle said to Kinkajou quickly in a low voice. A very big, scary-looking dragon is about to show up, but he can't hurt you, and he can't see me or hear me, so don't be confused by that. I'll explain everything when he's gone. Kinkajou's eyes were shining with excitement. I feel like I fell asleep in one adventure and woke up in a totally different one. What is happening? This is amazing! Anemone rumbled Darkstalker's voice outside the pavilion. Have you been doing more magic? Just a little healing spell, Anemone said cheerfully. Kinkajou, come here! 
I don't think you should be walking yet, Turtle said, but Kinkajou was already bouncing off the bed. Woo! She said, wobbling on her talons for a moment. Guess I haven't stood up in a few days. Here we go. She flared her wings for balance and hopped over to the opening, where Anemone was holding the flower curtain aside. Kinkajou stuck her head outside. Yikes! She yelled. Who are you? You were so big! Oh, said Darkstalker, his voice immediately softening. Moon's friend. Oh, that's all right. I was planning to heal her myself, in fact, but... Anemone, please remember to run your spells by me first. The three healers had all disappeared somewhere, perhaps scattering at the sight of Darkstalker. Turtle crept to the window and peeked out. The great Nightwing had landed on a pavilion outside, and all around him were flurries of leaves that weren't leaves and branches that weren't branches as alarmed rainwings tried to hide and spy and sidle away at the same time. I don't like being bossed around, Anemone said, lifting her chin. I know what I'm doing. Of course you do, he said. But a second eye on your spells can be helpful. I wish I'd had someone to give me advice about my scroll, for instance, so I could enchant it to be used only by me or to return to me if it was stolen. Wouldn't that have been smart? I can give you advice like that because I've already made my mistakes. Oh... Anemone said, considering. Sure, that makes sense. Turtle breathed a sigh of relief. Darkstalker wasn't angry, and he didn't seem to have noticed Turtle's spell underneath Anemone's. Apart from the horrible fact that Kinkaju is now bewitched into loving him, the plan had worked. Your Majesty, Darkstalker called. Turtle saw Glory and Deathbringer gliding through the treetops toward them. They landed on a branch nearby, and Glory studied Darkstalker thoughtfully. How did you find our village? She asked. I followed the sounds of Rainwings thinking, he said, tapping his head. Or at least what passes for thinking in a Rainwing these days. This tribe has really gone soft. Hey, Kinkachu objected. We defeated your stupid tribe, didn't we? Darkstalker didn't bother to respond. He didn't even bother to look at her. I came to deliver a warning, Your Majesty. He glanced around at the whispering trees. There are five dragons on their way here to kill you. They will most likely attack tonight, and unless I stop them, they will succeed. The trees gasped. I'll stop them, Deathbringer said, lashing his tail. I've stopped assassins before. I have bad news for you, said Darkstalker. I'm the one who can see the future. I've seen the part where you get stabbed by a sandwing tail. Sandwings? Glory asked. Why would Sandwings want to attack me? They're working with a pair of Nightwings you misplaced, Darkstalker said. Does that ring a bell? Glory exchanged a glance with the Deathbringer, and Turtle remembered the missing prisoners he heard about while leaves dropping, the ones who'd escaped from the Sandwing stronghold. You know what you need, Darkstalker went on. A nice, strong prison of your own. Wouldn't it solve a lot of problems? Rainwings are not really a prison kind of tribe. Glory started to say, but Darkstalker was already snapping a branch off one of the trees overhead. Branch, he commanded. Grow into a fine, strong, indestructible prison, with room for at least eight prisoners that no dragon could ever break out of. He flung the branch down toward the ground, and as it fell it began to grow, snapping outward and up, smashing through everything it hit as it plummeted. When it finally crashed to earth far below them, it was a massive, dense cube of some unfamiliar material with no windows. The last few blocks slammed into place, and then it fell silent, apparently finished. The rain wings all stared down at it. Turtle could see Kinkaju leaning over the edge of the walkway outside the healer's hut, her face a picture of outrage. The prison was gray and solid, large and forbidding. It hulked on the rainforest floor like a sinister cloud that had been dragged to earth and chained down. Everything about it exuded wrongness. Perfect, said Darkstalker. A ring of metal keys had appeared in his talons, and he tossed them to Queen Glory. You're welcome. Glory caught the keys and held them at arm's length like a town full of slugs. I don't see any windows on that... thing, she said. It would be cruel to put any rain wings in there, shut off from the sun, and ten seems like far more prisoners than we'll ever have. Darkstalker shrugged. You never know, he said. But... Use it however you like. At least you can get Mastermind out of the quicksand now, or give him to me, and I'll take him far away. It's up to you. 
Glory lifted her chin. He still has to answer for his crimes against Rainwings. Oh, yes, said Darkstalker. Does this tribe have a terribly complex justice system, or what's taking so long? It's a work in progress, Glory said. Let's visit your new prison, which should be a safe place to wait for the assassins, Darkstalker suggested, spreading his wings. And meanwhile, I can tell you about the courts and trials and laws we had in the old Night Kingdom. It was a fascinating process, really, beginning and ending with the Queen's judgment, of course. He spiraled down to the rainforest floor, his voice fading as he dropped. Queen Glory, Deathbringer, and an enemy all flew after him. Turtle took a step back into the pavilion. His heart was beating anxiously. What if his spell didn't work, and Kinkajou was as bewitched by Darkstalker as anyone else? Or what if Darkstalker wasn't using a spell after all, and everyone else genuinely liked him, and Turtle was just wrong? Kinkajou ducked back inside, catching a delicate lavender orchid on one of her frills and sauntered over to him. So that dragon's totally evil, she said. You think so? You really do? Said Turtle. He felt as though he could collapse right here and have a nap for three days. He wasn't imagining things, and he wasn't alone anymore. He's acting like the boss of Anemone, he's making creepy, unnecessary, un-rain-wingy things with his magic, and he's clearly trying to manipulate everyone with stuff like, I'll save you from assassins, and, oh, I was gonna heal her myself, actually. The good news is, Queen Glory and Deathbringer will see right through him. They're probably planning some clever way to drive him out of the rainforest right now. Um, unfortunately they're not, said Turtle. They like him, or they think they do. See, I think he's using magic on everyone. I don't know the details of the spell, but it seems like everyone who meets him or talks to him ends up thinking he's perfectly nice, harmless, and trustworthy. Everyone? Said Kinkajou. Even Winter. Said Turtle. Winter worst of all. Holy coconuts! Kinkajou scratched her nose, turning a thoughtful shade of deep blue. I'm really surprised. That Nightwing seems like the kind of dragon who believes he's super charming. Like, he wouldn't need magic to win dragons over. Maybe said Turtle. But it's failed him once before, so I think he wants the extra security of magic. He explained Darkstalker's history to Kinkajou, at least as much as he knew of it. That led him to Darkstalker's anima scroll, so then he had to explain what had happened with Peril and Scarlet, and then as much as he knew of the story with Hailstorm. It was getting dark by the time he finished. Bah. Kinkajou grumbled, flicking her wings as orange starbursts went off across her scales. I really did miss everything. That's so unfair. Well, you're not missing this crisis, Turtle pointed out. You and I are the only dragons here who are safe from Darkstalker, which means... He took a deep breath. You're the only one who can stop him. You mean we're the only ones who can stop him, right? Kinkajou said. I was sort of hoping you would do it, Turtle admitted. Turtle? She nudged him so he teetered sideways. I totally would, but I'd rather do it with you. Saving the world is more fun, plus also less terrifying with friends. She gave him a sweet smile that made him extremely nervous about what an enemy's love spell might be doing to her brain. I am not a heroic dragon. Turtle protested. I don't have good ideas, I'm lazy, and I hide when bad things happen. Waking me up was a good idea. Kinkajou said brightly. And look, you're not hiding, you're right here where all the bad things are. And you left Jane Mountain to find me and Moon and the others, and that's not lazy or hiding either. I was following peril. Turtle pointed out. If I'm anything in this story, I'm maybe the hapless sidekick. Awesome. Kinkajou left her feet beaming. I've always wanted a hapless sidekick. Okay, I don't know what hapless means, but it sounds like happy, so I bet it's awesome. Let's go take him down. She made a beeline for the door. Wait, now? Turtle said. What's the plan? Is there a plan? You know, the hapless sidekick is the one who dies, right? Not in our story. Kinkajou called. Kinkajou, where are you going? Turtle shouted as she barged through the hanging orchids into the dusk. I'm going to study him. Kinkajou explained as he emerged behind her, as though this were all perfectly obvious. So we can figure out what he's enchanted to hypnotize everybody, and then we're going to steal it or break it, and then everyone will be all, Ah, there's a monster dragon trying to manipulate us, and they'll rise up and stop him. Done. The day is saved. Turtle was beginning to wonder whether his problem-solving approach and Kinkajou's might be completely incompatible. I don't think it'll be that easy. He said, rubbing his forehead. Why not? You said he can't hurt me. Kinkajou pointed out. Wait, why can't he hurt me? Because of the spell I put on you. Said Turtle. Kinkajou stared at him. All right. He said. There's one more thing I should probably have mentioned. 
She bundled him back inside the healer's pavilion. You're an animus? She hissed softly. Kind of a secret one? He said with a shrug. Like, please don't tell anybody? I went through this already with Peril, Moon, and Winter, and Kibli. Three moons! Kinkajou cried. Why am I always the last to know everything? Well, no. He said. That would make you the fifth. The fifth to know. Out of all the dragons in Pyria. Or sixth, I suppose, if you count me. Kinkajou considered that for a moment with her snout scrunched up. Cool. She said finally. All right, that's not too bad. But next time you have a major enormous secret, tell me first, okay? Okay. He said. Maybe I should mention that I've cast a spell to hide myself from Darkstalker. He pulled out a stick and explained what it did, and how he couldn't cast any more spells because Darkstalker would sense them, except for the one he'd managed to hide under anemones. So you see... He finished. I'm not actually here in the middle of all the bad things, because I'm really actually hiding. I'm hiding all the time. Ooh. Kinkajou said, her eyes shining. Totally invisible to Darkstalker? That is an excellent spell. Another great idea, see? We'll be an awesome team. You can be the idea dragon, and I can be the wham, bam, shove a pineapple of his snout dragon. No, no, that won't work. I think his snout is enchanted. Turtle pointed out. To be invulnerable to pineapples? Kinkajou asked and burst into giggles. Oh dear. An image of tiny, rainbow-colored Kinkajou lobbing fruit at Darkstalker popped into Turtle's head. Maybe he hadn't entirely thought through his choice of hero. Don't worry so much, Kinkajou said, brushing his wing with hers. Your forehead will get stuck that way. My plan will totally work, I swear. Or if it doesn't, we'll come up with a new amazing plan. Ooh, I bet this is exactly how Glory felt when she was about to save the world. She bounded off to the doorway again, and Turtle found himself thinking that he couldn't imagine Queen Glory bounding, or in fact getting this excited about anything. Outside, the sky was fading into purple dark, shadows hurrying into all the gaps between the trees. Turtle felt a brush of soft fur as a sloth clambered by right over his head. He could hear snoring coming from a few hammocks already, and the air hummed with the hungry buzz of dusk-happy insects. Far below them, a ring of fire smoldered on the forest floor, encircling the shadowy figures of Darkstalker, Queen Glory, and the others. Kinkju let out a small growl when she saw it. Queen Glory doesn't usually allow that much fire in our forest. She whispered. There are strict rules for the Nightwings about how and when and how carefully to use it. She's definitely fallen for that baboon butt's act. Spell. Turtle reminded her. It's a spell. Let's get closer. Kinkajou wafted down toward the gathered dragons as softly as a falling leaf, navigating the interlocking branches with ease. Turtle realized that Rainwings must have some ability to see in the dark, just as Seamwings did. He followed her, less gracefully and with a bit more noise, but he knew Darkstalker couldn't hear him. They settled near the prison, outside the fiery circle, but close enough to hear the dragons inside it. Damp leaves flapped in their faces and things scuttled away beneath their claws. Kinkajou shuffled in closer to Turtle. He could feel her wings brushing his, her scales cool and camouflaged to a dark black blue. Was she really in love with him now? She was acting exactly the same as she always had, but maybe that's the way she was with everyone, no matter how she felt about them? Or maybe she already felt this way about you, way back at school. Turtle shook off that highly unlikely thought. He was not a dragon anyone would notice or fall for, especially when he was standing next to funny Kibli or handsome Winter or kind-hearted Umber. He felt a pang at the thought of his clawmate. If this is ever over, maybe I could use my magic to find Umber and make sure he's alright. Did you hear something? Glory asked, turning to look out at the dark in the direction of Turtle and Kinkajou. Just an orangutan, said Darkstalker with a flick of his tail. I'll be able to hear the killer's minds approaching. I heard a noise said Deathbringer, sounding disgruntled. <sighs> but of course I can't see anything because there's a fire in the way! Trust me, this will keep your queen safe, said Darkstalker. They'll have to run through the fire to get to her, which they are not brave enough to do, or fly over it, which will let us hear them coming. Although I'll hear them coming my way first, of course. He lifted his head and stared piercingly into the dark. He looks like he's posing for a portrait. Kinkajou whispered to Turtle. Pompous Sneergard, the Magnificent, awaits his legions of doomed enemies. Turtle smothered a laugh. He realized that his wings were less tense than they had been in days, and that this, perhaps, was the best part of sharing his burden with someone else. He hadn't thought of Chameleon or seen any flashes of blood in his mind since Kinkajou woke up. His constant, pulsing anxiety had ebbed just a little, and cracks of hope were sliding in. Shh. He said anyway. He could still hear you. But he won't care. She answered. I'm less than nobody to him. She paused. Heek. I don't know if I like the sound of that, being less than nobody, being unimportant to the future. I want to be somebody. 
Somebody dragons notice and remember. Nope. Turtle thought. Nope, nope, nope. I gave up on that idea a long time ago. If no one notices you, you can't let anyone down. Kinkuchi was watching him expectantly. Oh. He said. Uh, um, you're somebody to me. She clasped her front talons over her snout to hide her giggles. Right line. She said. But you need to work on your timing. And believability. You are. He protested. I was thinking about something else. Oh, now I feel very fascinating. <laughs> she joked. I'm not sure you're taking this seriously enough. He said sternly. Here they come. Darkstalker rumbled suddenly, in a voice like the first breath of a snowstorm. I will take care of them, your majesty. He stepped over the fire with his towering legs. The flames lapped at his scales, but left no marks. Turtle shivered. The powerful nightling stalked away into the night, the ground trembling with every footstep. Ha! Anemone said merrily from her spot in the center of the circle, as far away from the flames as she could get. I feel sorry for those assassins. I wouldn't want to run into him in a dark forest. In a startlingly brief amount of time, Darkstalker came back, accompanied by the noise of clanking chains. As he approached the fire, Turtle realized that he was dragging four dragons behind him, all of them linked by chains around their necks and ankles. One of them was a young female Nightwing, and she was spitting mad. Let us go! She hissed at Darkstalker. Who do you think you are? Are you a Nightwing or not? Whose side are you on? Chains. Glory murmured. We don't usually do chains in the rainforest. They're very effective, though. Deathbringer pointed out. I much prefer seeing your enemies this way. Queen Glory, Darkstalker said. Here are the dragons who are planning to kill you. He stopped and blew out most of the fire in one long breath, leaving only a small section of flames. Turtle blinked away the dancing orange spots in his vision as his eyes adjusted back to the dark. Would you like me to dispose of them? Darkstalker's voice asked, deep and eerie in the shadows overhead. Oh, wonderful, said the female prisoner, bitterly. Fat lot of you see you were. She hissed at the two sandwing captives. The last was another Nightwing, a solidly built male, who shuffled toward her and reached his tail to rest gently on hers. Wait, said Glory. I want to talk to them. You're fierce teeth, aren't you? And this must be strong wings. The female only glared back, but the male nodded. Listen, said Glory. What you did cannot easily be forgiven. You kidnapped Sonny and you planned to betray us to burn in the hope that my friends and I would die, including your own brother. Turtle blinked at Kinkajou, then back at the other dragons. Brother? Was this hissing ball of fury related to Starflight? No. Fierce sheath snapped. I would have kept him out of it. Glory regarded her for a moment, as though she wasn't sure what to believe. Well... That's something, at least, she said. What was your plan here tonight? To take the throne for a true Nightwing, so our tribe can have its pride back. Fierce teeth trying to lift her shoulders under the weight of the chains. Oh, already taken care of, said Darkstalker. She gave a little tug on the chain he held, and Strongwing stumbled forward into an accidental bow. I'm going to rule the Nightwings now. The ones who choose to go with him, Glory interjected. You can't, Fierce teeth said. You're male. And where did you come from? You weren't with us in the volcano, that's for sure. Who gives you the right to rule us? Size, power, timing, charm, and a whole bunch of dragons who think it's a great idea, said Darkstalker with a grin. My name is Darkstalker. Stronglings let out a whimper and covered his head with his wings. We're all going to die, he said in a muffled voice. It was all true. It was. I knew it. He's come back to kill us all. But Fierce Teeth held her ground, staring up a Darkstalker. Really? She said. From the ghost stories. You. In the scales. He said. Right. <laughs> she scoffed. That's a pretty clever trick. Show up, pretend to be everyone's worst nightmare, and scare them into giving you the crown. Well, it's not going to work on me, you scaly worm. I'm not even a little bit afraid of you. <laughs> Darkstalker chuckled, rustling the leaves in the trees. Fierce teeth. Strongwings whispered. Stop. It's him. Stop making mud. It is Darkstalker. Anemone said loudly from behind Glory and Deathbringer. And he could crush you with one flick of his claw. Maybe he should, given what you were planning to do with the queen. Deathbringer added. If you're so powerful, then you can handle a challenge. Fierce teeth said to Darkstalker, ignoring the others. I want the Nightwing throne. I think I should get to be queen. I'm female and I know my tribe. I'd be better at it than some lying stranger. Hey, Turtle whispered to Kinkajou. Maybe I'm wrong about Darkstalker's spell. 
She doesn't seem affected by it at all. Actually, I think this is how she talks to dragons she likes. Kinkaju said ruefully. Brave little fierce teeth, said Darkstalker. Don't call me little, she interrupted him. Just because you're overgrown doesn't mean you can patronize me. I was going to say I like your spirit, Darkstalker started. Can you make that a little bit more condescending? Fierce teeth snapped back. He paused, and Turtle got the distinct impression that he's trying not to laugh. All right, he said at length. You're not a dragon who likes compliments, I see. So I'll be blunt. I don't want to begin my reign as King of the Nightwings by killing one of my subjects, especially one who could be such a valuable asset in rebuilding our tribe. He turned to Glory. Given the utter failure of her schemes so far and her relationship to Starflight, my proposal is this. Grant her your mercy and give her to me. Tomorrow I'll take her to the Night Kingdom with me, where she'll have no reason to bother you anymore. She can be my problem instead. I will be your problem, Fierce Teeth growled. No one gives me to anybody. I'll go to the Night Kingdom only if I want to. She paused, narrowed her eyes suspiciously, and added, What Night Kingdom? Where? The old one, said Darkstalker. Where the tribe should have been for the last two thousand years. You'll love it. We'll find you something important to do. Hang on, said Deathbringer. She tries to assassinate Glory. In her punishment, if she gets to be part of your court, ruling the Nightwings? Makes sense to me, said Glory thoughtfully. She wouldn't be a threat to me anymore once she has what she wants, right, Fierce Teeth? And then I don't have to have Starflight's entire family behind bars. She took a step closer to Fierce Teeth. Would you leave my rainforest, my friends, and my tribe alone if we give you this second chance? Fierce Teeth glared sideways at Darkstalker. Are you lying? She demanded. Would I really be in charge of something? All you want is a little power and a lot of respect, Darkstalker observed. I can give you those. And strong wings. She interjected. He stays with me. Darkstalker gave strong wings an unimpressed look and shrugged. If you insist. Fierce Teeth tapped her claws on the ground thoughtfully. Strong wings still had his head covered, looking very much like a dragon who regretted all his life choices so far. Think about it. Overnight, Darkstalker suggested. In our lovely new accommodations for troublemakers. He swept one wing toward the prison, where Turtle was sure even a few minutes would convince any dragon to accept alternate offers. Hey, what about us? Grunted one of the sand wings. Queen Thorn gets to decide your fate, Glory said, drawing herself up regally. In the meanwhile, you're going in there too. She tossed the keys to Darkstalker. Darkstalker twitched the chain and Strongwing stumbled back to his feet. Wings drooping as they marched inside, all four prisoners disappeared into the forbidding gray block behind Darkstalker. Glory shuddered. That was awful, she said. I always thought I'd like dispensing justice more than that. I wouldn't call that justice, Deathbringer grumbled. We're looking for what brings peace to our rainforest, Glory pointed out, and for whatever gives dragons a chance to be their best selves. She hesitated, glancing around at an enemy who had curled up drowsily under a mammoth fern. Something does feel weird, though, she added in a lower voice. Like I'm not entirely sure I trust my decisions right now. She's feeling what Kibley felt, Turtle guessed. Torn between Darkstalker's spell and what her own intelligence is telling her. Darkstalker emerged from the prison, closing the heavy metal door with a grim clunk behind him. Turtle noticed that he didn't return the keys to Glory, but neither did she ask for them. Now that's taken care of, he said, and your life has been saved and everything. I'll return to my tribe and get some sleep. We have a long flight ahead in the morning. Thank you, Glory said. A little reluctantly, Turtle thought, or maybe he just hoped so. Cheer up, your majesty, Darkstalker said cheerfully. We stopped some bad guys tonight. Isn't that fantastic? Just think what kind of teamwork our tribes might have ahead of us. Wait, said Deathbringer, tilting his head. Didn't you say there were five dragons coming to attack Glory tonight? Why were there only four prisoners? Was that a moment of hesitation from Darkstalker? I didn't want to alarm you, he said slowly. There was a third Sandwing. But he fought back, and I was forced to kill him. If that's true, he did it very quickly, Turtle thought. And silently. Oh, said Deathbringer. Well, good. That's unfortunate, said Glory at the same time. We should find out his name from the other two. I'm sure Queen Thorn will want that information. Indeed. Very wise, said Darkstalker, nodding. And I'll take care of the body for you. Don't worry. 
Kinkajou jabbed Turtle on the side, and he nearly jumped out of his scales. Lying! She whispered, pointing one claw at Darkstalker. Lying, lying, super liar! He agreed with her, but he couldn't see the point of this lie. What was Darkstalker hiding now? Very well. We'll see you in the morning, said Glory, spreading her wings. She and Deathbringer flew off to the treetops, leaving Darkstalker and Enemy alone in the dying glow of the embers. Darkstalker looked down at the sleeping Sewing Princess. Something glinted in his eyes. Something that made Turtle want to throw hiding spells all over his sister, no matter the risk. He crouched closer to the damp earth, wishing he were smarter, braver, bolder, really any other kind of dragon than the kind he was. Not much longer, princess, Darkstalker whispered. Soon, it'll be your turn to change the world.